Hey guys, this is Donoid. Today we're going to be soldering a very, very small BGA chip into this thing. So I've had this 2011 MacBook Pro for about a year. I think it was probably a dumpster dive machine at some point, but I really don't remember where it came from. Anyway, I've always just sort of left it in my broken laptop's pile because I've known since the day I got it that it had pretty serious motherboard problems. Anyway, a couple of days ago I was watching some Lewis Rossman videos. He's a channel that I really like, by the way. And I just sort of remembered that I had this thing. So I got it out, not expecting to do much, and started looking at what problems it had. So I haven't diagnosed everything yet, but the first one I noticed was that there is no backlight on the screen when you turn it on. So I looked this up on Lewis's channel, and in fact, no backlight is a pretty common issue. I then looked at the video, and it involved soldering a BGA chip. I wasn't sure if I could do that, but I thought I'd give it a try. So here's what happened. The first step was to set up something you don't usually see in my videos, a magnifying lens. Now that I could see the chip, it was time to add flux to it, and then begin to heat it in order to melt the solder attaching it to the board. Unfortunately, the solder didn't want to melt with the hot air gun next to my magnifying lens, so I had to remove the lens in order to get the hot air closer to the board. This worked much better, and I was able to remove the chip with tweezers once the solder was molten. With the old chip removed, I then added flux to the solder pads and cleaned them off with some solder on the tip of a regular soldering iron. The new chip already has solder applied, so I next had to remove the old solder left on the board when the old chip was removed. This is done using solder wick and a regular soldering iron. Since I didn't need to use a hot air gun for this step, I put the magnifying lens back so I could see the pads better. With the old solder removed, the pads now looked like this through the lens. While mostly free of solder, there is still some questionable looking dirt, which I removed using isopropyl alcohol and a q-tip. Once the pads were completely cleaned and ready for the new chip, I added some more flux and melted it using the hot air gun. Then it was time to remove the new chip from its packaging, make sure it was oriented correctly, and very carefully nudge it into place. This would have been easier with a microscope, but the magnifying lens did help a lot for this step. Once the chip looked to be correctly lined up with the pads underneath, I then had to remove the magnifying glass and use the hot air gun to heat the new chip. Heating the chip melts the solder underneath, which then moves to the nearest pad on the board. This moves the chip slightly. Once the solder is melted, the heat can be removed, allowing it to cool and attaching the new chip. With the chip appearing to be correctly installed, it was then time to test the board. This meant putting the board back into the machine, a task which is about as difficult as you'd think Apple would make it, as I don't have any spare parts to connect it to. Then I had to turn the laptop back on, and surprisingly, it worked. Even though the screen backlight now works, the laptop still has problems. The biggest of these by far is that the SMC is either not working, not powering on, or not communicating with the rest of the system properly. That means that in order to turn it on, I have to do an SMC bypass by holding down the button, plugging it in, continuing to hold for 5 seconds, and then letting go of the button. The laptop will run this way, but all fans are at full, and the system can't boot to macOS in many cases because macOS expects the SMC to be present. That means that in order to boot to macOS, I have to hold the shift key to enter safe mode. While a Mac can be run in safe mode, it means losing QECI graphics acceleration, which means that things like opening the launch pad look like this. Because of this, I decided to download a copy of Apple Service Diagnostics ASD3S144 from the internet. ASD is what's used by Apple stores to determine what's wrong with your Mac when you bring it in, and while people outside of Apple aren't technically supposed to have access to it, it's reasonably easy to find with a quick search. This particular MacBook needs ASD3S144, but it depends on your model. On this machine, before I even click Start Testing, ASD pops up a huge red failed banner. A look at the log reveals that, as expected, the SMC can't be communicated with. Now, this is a result of booting in SMC bypass mode, but seeing as you can't boot without bypass mode, this is certainly going to be something I'll have to fix later. So those are the results of my chip replacement on this MacBook's motherboard. Again, if you want to do this repair for yourself, I strongly suggest you watch Lewis Rossman's video here rather than mine. And if anyone watching this video knows the solution to my SMC problems, or has any ideas, I encourage you to leave them in the comments. I'm probably going to continue looking into this machine myself, but so far everything I've checked with a multimeter and oscilloscope looks like it's doing okay. So, uh, we fixed some stuff, but not everything, and I hope I can do more work on this machine in the future. Hopefully get it to a usable state. So, uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.